All right. I am with my guest this week, somebody I'm very excited to talk to after an incredible 2021 one, Jesse Lonis. How are you doing, man? Thanks for taking the time to chat with us at Poker News. I'm great, man. It's great to be here, and I appreciate you having me on. I wanted to have you on after I just kept seeing your name pop up over and over and over again in just all sorts of tournaments all across the country. Um, 2021 was, without a doubt, a breakout year for you. I'm looking at your hand and mob right now. Um, your first result was in 2018. You had $3,000 in cashes, 25K in 2019, 83K in 2020, and then in 2021 just blew up to $864,000. Uh, already off to a good start this year, 193000 and we're only a month in. But what, like, what happened? Where did you come from, man? <laughs> well, honestly, I played cash mainly for like six or seven years before I really played any tournaments at all. And um, in 2020 is when I really actually started taking – tournaments more serious and I put in a little more volume and then obviously 2021 I I started really going after it and had a nice score at the beginning of the year and it propelled me to be able to put more volume in and then good things happened from there it kind of rolled rolled in and now I'm in the groove. <laughs> Let's talk about going way back can you tell us a little bit about you know where you're from what sort of family life you come from? Yeah, I'm from upstate New York. Um, Utica, New York is where I'm from. Honestly, in the poker world, everyone knows Turning Stone Casino. So when I was like 18, most East Coast grinders that are under 21 go to Turning Stone to start playing because it's the only 18 and over place that you can play. So I, I started playing there a lot. I would I would play while I was in college. I would play like the 1-2 one, two, and 2-5, two, no limit. But the game selections just weren't that great because there's not – Honestly, in upstate New York, though, there's not much money in that area, really. So I didn't really get to progress my game until um, Rivers Casino in Schenectady, New York, opened. Um, they started getting a lot of traffic from New York City, and the two five games just played like five ten games. And then I realized, like, wow, there's a lot of money that can be made playing cash games and poker. So before you were playing these cash games, when did you first learn the game of poker? What was your first uh, exposure? Did somebody teach you the game, moneymaker boom? What was your poker no, origin? Honestly, my earliest memories of playing were my grandmother. Um, she raised me when I was young. And when I was like 10, 11 years old, she used to play on um, I'm full tilt poker back then. I'm pretty sure it was. And uh, she would play for like, I'm sure it was like pennies back then, like probably one or one cent, two cent. I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but she'd, she'd um, always have to, you know, older ladies, they always have to use the bathroom a lot. So she would take a lot of bathroom breaks and she'd let me sit and play for her while she would use the bathroom and she'd come back and usually have more than when she left. And she, um, so that was like my earliest memories. And then I had my uncle, he, he played also, and he had like little friend tournaments and stuff. And, I remember the first one that I got to play with them. They were like playing like a $50 buy-in and it was like eight of his buddies and I ended up winning it. And it was just funny because like none of them wanted to pay. They're like, oh, come on, the kid won it, you know? And that was like my earliest memories. And then from there on, I would just play randomly with family and friends, you know? And then before I knew it, honestly, when I was young, I never thought that, hey, I'll probably do this for a living, you know? It was just more of a hobby. And right. And then, but now you're what, in your mid twenties, I think I read somewhere like you're 26, 27. Yeah. I just turned 26, um, September 30th. So nice. And, but and now you're no longer in New York, right? You're, you've moved, no, made the I, move to Vegas. Yeah. I live in Vegas now. Yep. When did that happen? And, and what inspired you to take that leap? Um, I moved here in August. I moved to the West coast about two years ago. I moved to Oregon. I had my best friend live there and, um, I had a bankroll I built up at playing cash, like like 60 70 thousand and I didn't really want to take it straight to Vegas I was a little nervous I could go broke quick you know I've heard too many stories so I was like let me move close so I can travel for tournaments and stuff and on the west coast there's this more variety of tournaments even outside of Vegas like I was playing in northern California a lot Sacramento Thunder Valley and um there was just a lot of smaller event tournaments where you could travel a couple hours and you know play like uh, mid-stakes poker so it was just more exposure to the tournament scene and everything. And um, that was my first taste. And then after I started having a few hits, um, I, I, I was like, I think I'm ready to make the move. And then I had a newborn daughter 
and that was the final nail in the coffin where I was like, all right, I, I can't be away every weekend and in Vegas, I got to be home with her. So in August, I decided to buy a house here. Very nice. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I seen on your social media, you've shared some pictures of your young daughter. What's it like to, you know, become a father while you're, you know, also crushing it at poker and balancing that, you know, poker pro lifestyle? It's, um, it's definitely, a, it's a, you got to find a good balance when, you know, it's like, I try to make the most of my trips when I go out. I try to like keep it to like, especially now I keep it at, at the week at the most so I can be home and I start missing her after like two or three days I'm like kind of get homesick now it's like I used to just like be ready to go out and play the tournaments and I'd be like I could be gone for a couple of weeks but now it's like after like four or five days I'm like well I just want to get home <laughs> and I see for those of watching the video portion of this they can see two dogs lounging on a, uh, oh, yeah. a couch or recliner behind you what uh, what what, what, you, what are the what's the story with the dogs oh I've had I've had they're both Rocco is my oldest one they're he's five years old and my other one's four years old and the one I got in Oregon when I I went out there to see where my buddy lived like five years ago and I got him in Oregon and then I took him back to New York with me and I got the other one at a pound in New York because it looked just like um the older one when he was a puppy and I just couldn't let him sit there and so yeah. I so now they're both women. I, they're they're my first kids. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Uh, some you know, listeners and viewers of the podcast here know my dogs. They occasionally make an appearance in the background. Uh, so yeah. I'm a big dog person, as is you know Sarah yeah. Herring. So um, let's talk about your 2021. You said you had a breakout score right off the bat, and it was in January of 2021. You finished fifth in the WPT Lucky Hearts Poker Open for two hundred twenty three thousand dollars. Um, not quite your largest score. You'd go on to surpass that at the WSOP um, yeah. when you made a deep run in the main event. We'll talk about that after a little bit. But what was it like to get that first big? I mean, two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars is a huge score for pretty much anybody. Um, and you yeah. know, this was just in happened to be in one of the Seminoles' massive tournaments. Yeah, it was. Um, it was really honestly right around then is when I found out I was having a baby. So it was that was extra motivation there where I was like I really need to lock in and take this serious and make a deep run and I actually satellited into that tournament for 400 bucks so it was a nice 400 to a quarter you know to 220k so it was like that just you know gave me the bankroll comfortability to be able to play my style and be able to play other tournaments and you know once you make a deep run you see the path and you can you understand how to get there more when you do it in such a big field. So it made just every other spot a little easier moving forward. And then of course you go on through 2021, you're racking up more uh, scores in May. You had a $89,000 score finishing third in a win um, $1,100 event. Uh, yeah. You had, you know, lots of five figure scores and then you won an event uh, and at the Venetian. And I, I remember this one specifically, uh, it was the $1,600 pot limit Omaha championship uh, for $81,000. Uh, and I, I just think that was the one where i have been seeing your name, but this is like, okay, here's his winner's photo, if you will. Yeah. So what was it like to, you know, get that win in the summertime? That one was a funny one, actually, because I play, I played a lot of PLO like a couple years before, but I kind of took a few years off of PLO and was just focusing on no limit. And um, so for that tournament, I, um, actually made a mistake in the first day because it was like it was just I was a little rusty at PLO and I called a hand where I was thinking I played the board and I'm, I was just like having a mind fart and mm -hmm. didn't realize like I, I had nothing so I called the guy with like king high and they're all like dude you got nothing you know what I mean and I'm like and they're all laughing and I go well the funny part is the guy that can't read the board is going to win the tournament and and I ended up actually doing it and I had like a few people that were at that table like dude you weren't you didn't lie you actually you actually won the tournament like and uh and then uh, I actually followed up and then I won the one at the win like the or I chopped it heads up with the guy the next the very next one so it was like it, it was a that was just a funny it was a funny one and um with PLO tournaments, it's like, I feel like most people that play them are PLO cash players. So they don't understand the tournament dynamics late and they don't, they kind of like overfold. They don't understand that like the blinds mean a lot at the end. So it's kind of, it was kind of cool playing those. And I actually really enjoy the PLO tournaments for that yeah. reason. You said you, you said you chopped one at the win. That was about two weeks later. 
And then we fast forward, let's fast forward to um, the World Series of Poker in September in right away, uh, I think it was the first or second race at award. It was actually event number three. It was a thousand dollar COVID-19 relief charity event. Yep. Uh, Jeremy Osmus won that one, but you finished in second place for 30,000 bucks. You know, what was yeah. it like to start off the WSOP with a bang and, and come that close to a bracelet? Um, it was, again, it was like, it, it gave me a nice little confidence boost going into the series. And um, it was, that was just a fun little tournament. It was quick. Honestly, it was one of the quickest final tables I got to. It was very turbo structure. And um, I was not, like to lose that one heads up was actually, I guess, not too bad because it was such a small difference. And I said that for my first one, if I lose that one heads up, whatever, hopefully I get the next one where it's bigger, but it was cool. It was, um, it was just cool to be at the final table and feel the aura of like the lights on, you know, and just get the experience out of the way early. And, um, you know, I wasn't mad to lose to Jeremy. He's such a nice guy anyway. <laughs> well, speaking of good WSOP experiences, you got one at the end, and it's one that I think a lot of listeners are envious of and hope to one day experience, and that's going deep in the main event. You actually finished in 25th place for over $240,000 out of a field of 6,650 runners. Uh, the main event is obviously very special. What was it like to, um, you know, make a deep run, but also to, you know, finish in 25th great score obviously but you know you of course you want to make the final table and have a shot at winning it I get more butterflies now hearing it that I got 25th in it than when it was going on you kind of just like you don't even realize like how big of a deal you're it is when you're in the moment you're kind of just like locked in focusing on making all the correct decisions but that was just it was everything you dream of as a poker player just you know just making a day seven is just like unreal you know you play poker for that and um it was um it was just crazy I remember on day one I was like I got into a big hand where and it was a freeze and if it was a rebuy structure I remember this hand I would have went with it and I had like pocket kings and there was like 100k in a pot and I had 19k left over on the river and a jack hit the river and I could just tell the guy was so confident once that jack hit and I could just tell in everything that he had jacks like the whole time I put him on queens or jacks and then the jack hit and I end up checking the river and he jams all in confident and I knew he would check back anything else and I end up folding kings face up with like 19k and chips left and I go well if I make a deep run I'm gonna remember this hand especially and the guy told me after he's like dude I can't believe you folded I had jacks and after that, I kind of chipped away, got back up to like starting stack and ended the day like right around starting stack, which was fine because you're so deep in that thing. It's like a marathon. And um, in the first three days, I was really short kind of. And then finally, I started getting a little more momentum. Once we got closer to the bubble, I could actually put a little pressure on people. And, um, and then, yeah, it was just after that, it was kind of smooth, smooth sailings. I remember I had the one day I had um. On day four, I want to say, I had J.C. Tran right to my right and Kenny Tran to my left, who are very wow. – they're OG, just yeah. great players, you know. And it's like people know J.C., but, like, Kenny Tran's one of the best, too. And he was very tough. And I was like, well, if I can make it through this day, I can make it through any day. You know, it was like – and uh, I ended up battling with those guys, built up a stack. And then after that, I got moved late in day four to a table and some kid gifted me a bunch of chips and went for it. And um, then I was just really confident going into day five because I had more chips and more big lines than I had the whole tournament. So I was like, all right, this is where we can start playing. And and then after that, I just remember day five was good and day six was good. And then day seven, I remember getting into and it was like, it wasn't even it kind of it felt like at the end it almost like turned you you start getting shorter and shorter and like big blinds and it's not as deep and it almost turns more turbulent towards the end mm -hmm. which is funny because it's such big pay jump so it's like it, it, but I just remember I don't honestly I don't even remember like the hands I lost I was just like before I knew it I was just like an average chips and then you know before I knew it, I had to play for a couple pay jumps because they were so massive and got short and then got knocked out by the champion, which I guess can't be too bad if you get knocked out by the guy that won. <laughs> yeah, no, it does seem to ease the pain a little bit. You went on to finish 2021, as I said earlier, uh, eight, uh, 800, 000, 60, $864,486, a career year so far. But 
you're already off to a huge start in 2022. Uh, it's yep. one month in, you have $193,000. Uh, and that's due in large part, you won a Venetian deep stack event already. Uh, you won uh, a, actually two, it looks like, right? So you won a $600 buy-in event and then the 1600 pot limit Omaha championship. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm looking at your biggest scores ever on Hendon Mom. Let me refresh this and go over here. So uh, pardon me, you started off by winning the $600 Venetian event for $58,000 finished sixth in a Stairway to Heaven, event number three for 20,000, and then finished second in the very next Stairway to Millions, which was the $10,000 buy-in for $89,000. Uh, you add on a $19,000 score down there at the Lucky Hearts Poker Open, which you were just from. Correct me if I'm wrong, were you not playing online poker last night, the WSOP high roller, and, and went pretty deep in that too? Yeah, I got home last or yesterday and um... I wanted to play that one. I like the, I like the bigger buy-ins online. You know, I can actually, I, it keeps me more entertained. Um, I guess I take it more serious, I guess. And yeah, last night was, um, that was a fun one. It was a 2k buy-in and um, I know your buddy and partner, Jesse Fallen was um, doing the thing. I watched it after. I had no idea when it, when it was on, I like his commentary and I like when he does them, you know, it's just fun to keep up that way too. And um, yeah, it was a weird, we, we got to the, I remember we got, we got five handed and we were just five handed in that thing for like an hour. Maybe it felt like, felt like forever. And the one guy just had like three big blinds and he kept, he doubled up about six times when he was all in and I ended up getting fifth place because I ended up getting short, which was whatever, you know, what can you do? But um, it was just a, it was a funny tournament because right after I got knocked out, I think the rest of the tournament lasted like 20 minutes. So it was like, we were five handed for like an hour and a half. And then they went through four people in 20 minutes. Cause it was just, just how the um, stacks were. <laughs> well, you obviously know how to play cash games. We talked about that. You are great at tournaments. You know how to do online poker, pot limit, Omaha, no limit, hold them. Do you know mixed games at all? I'm learning mixed games right now. And that's like where I, what I told my goal for next year is I want to be able to um, learn all the mixed games good enough to play in that 50 K players poker championship that they have. Yep. Cause it's just like a pinnacle tournament too. Just like I, I've always wanted to play in that one. I, you know, I'm a big Ms. Rocky fan and he was a beast in that one. And I just want to, um, yeah, I want to, I, I just want to compete in that one. That's like a fun, I, I love mixed games and, I just need to I need to learn them better. I don't have as much volume in them, and I just got to, you know, talk with the right people and sit down and just put some hours in and learn them. But I feel like I would have a good edge because I a lot of my growing up at Turning Stone, I played more um, 2040 limit hold them and 5100 limit hold them than anything, actually, and um, progressed that when I moved to Vegas, too. And before I had big scores, I was playing at the Bellagio, mainly just limit hold them with Ronnie Barda a lot. And um, I know he's the limit legend. And uh, so I, mixed games are natural to me. In effect, a lot of them are just limit games. And I just love, you know, the pot odds and everything like that. I'm just so I'm, I'm definitely want to learn all the mixed games. Just a little rusty right now. <laughs> One last question I got uh, for you. So I've been around the poker industry a long time. I've seen some good career trajectories, right? When somebody breaks, has a breakout year like you, just seems to be on the ascent. And as obviously the skill, it begs the question, like that high roller scene, you know, is yeah. that, is that uh, calling to you? You've obviously taken some shots in bigger events, but like, I can definitely see you there competing and holding your own and succeeding yeah. against a lot of those guys. Um, yeah, actually, I, this year I planned on definitely getting into it and starting to play the poker go events and all that. I actually had a good opportunity the, the pocket fives, uh, Josh Aria, he hit me up on, um, Twitter the other day and told me that they would and he emailed me and said that he um would love to have me as a you know get staked or whatever on there too yep. and sell action for the so I'm going to definitely do that for the events um usually like 10k and below I'll do on my own and then if it's 15k or higher I'm definitely going to sell action for them and um if it's a small field 10ks I don't mind selling little pieces too um so I'm definitely going to do that and when I'm in Florida actually I have a guy that for the high rollers he loves to back me for those and um gives me a free roll in it so I can't really beat it so it's like um so I definitely but here in Vegas I'm going to start just selling on pocket fives for the bigger events and and yeah I'm definitely gonna you're gonna see me hopefully battling with these boys <laughs> I figured and that's why I wanted to get you on the show and talk to you because like I said you know just going from uh 
from the cash games to tournaments, having some success and then breaking out like you did last year. And then of course, getting off to this hot start. Uh, I think big things are in store for you. I'm excited to see it. And, uh, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us and hopefully it won't be the last time. Hopefully we'll be doing some winter interviews or something in the future. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And um, the more I do these interviews, hopefully I'm more comfortable. You know, this is like my first live one to do. And I appreciate you having me on. I, it's, um, it's an honor. So no worries. You did good, man. And if anybody wants to keep on top of you, do you have any social media that you use regularly that they can do um, that? At? Yeah. My Twitter is just at Jesse Lonis. It's my name. And I have Instagram too. Um, uh, I, I believe it's the same thing. This at Je Jesse Lonis and uh, Facebook's more just family, but Twitter and um, Instagram. Yeah, I'm definitely cool, man. Well, definitely good luck not. out there. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you in Vegas before too long. Yeah. Thanks, Chad. Talk to you later.